we got some breaking news, breaking news. This is good news, good news. And um, uh, the, the UCA News, which is the independent Catholic news source, is reporting that Iran insists that the jailed Christian pastor is not, he has not been executed. That's the first great news to hear. But here's even better. And he will not be executed. Now, I want to know more about who's saying that, but let me just read to you quickly. This is the UCA, the uh, uh, Catholic, the independent Catholic news source.com, UCA news.com. Iran insists that the jailed Christian pastor will not be executed. That's good. A representative of Iran may have surprised the UN committee when he stated, so he said this to the United Nations, when he stated that Iran is tolerant of all religions and has no problem with people converting away from Islam. Really? Then why was he arrested? And why was he tried? And why was he found guilty? And why was he sentenced to death? And why did he go through one appeal, two appeal, three appeal, four? And to the, all the way to the top of the Supreme Iranian Parliament Court. And it was overturned and sentenced to die. Why take this guy to the brink? Why put him and his family and children through such turmoil? Why have the entire world... But hey, you know what? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for sparing this man. Thank you for prayer. Thank you for the power of prayer. Under fire from the United Nations Human Rights Panel, a top Iranian official claims that the Christian pastor insulted Islam but denies he faces execution. The UN Human Rights Council met in Geneva Monday where Ahmad Shahid, a special reporter for human rights in Iran, delivered a report on human rights abuses in Iran and called for the release of Pastor Yosef Nakahani. The pastor has been held in prison for nearly three years. He was convicted on charges that Tehran has described in conflicting terms. First as apostasy and other faith-based crimes, then as rape, and extortion, which you know they're Trump on those. This man never raped nobody. This man didn't rape nobody. He's married, he has two children, he's a pastor. Responding to Shahid's presentation, Iranian human rights envoy Mohammad Jaouf Lajani denied that Na Kahani faces the death penalty, though the sentence was spelled out in a ruling handed down by the Iran's highest court last fall. La Johnny also offered a new set of charges against Na Dahani, including preaching to youth without their parents' permission, converting his home into a church, and off offending Islam. Okay. Uh, in the last 33 years, we, we got that problem in America. So I'm not going to say anything about uh, Iran and the, and the, and the uh, Islamic jihadists there about... He might have broke the law that where he turned his home into a church. Uh, we got that problem here. There's that couple in California. They turned their home into a Bible study. They were in their own home. They didn't even call it a church. Their own home, having a Bible study in their own house. Friends come over, and it was against the law. They got fined $300 from the city. What? So there's no difference between that Iran and America on that one. But hang on. La Johnny also offered a new set of charges against him. We, we know that which included preaching to the youth without their parents' permission and converting his home into a church and offending Islam. Uh, in the past 33 years after the Islamic Revolution, no single person has been put to death or executed or pursued or for changing his religion from Islam, he told the council. Hundreds of people are changing from other religions to Islam. What about once leaving Islam to other <laughs> Why should we be so sensitive about a few people to change from their religion from Islam? Okay, okay, if you guys will stick to that. Christianity and Judaism are preached in Iran. This is true. A lot of Christians in Iran. Not because the state wants them to be. Not because the public intended for that to be the plan. But because they just are pushing forward with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Christianity and Judaism are preached in Iran. 
said Lajani. And we have a number of synagogues and we have a number of churches, but there is no need to humiliate to offend Islam. Well, I don't think that he was trying to um, humiliate or offend Islam. I just think he was doing what every Christian does, and that's share the joy of Jesus Christ. Share the, 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 the power and the presence and the, and the magnificent um, satisfaction we have in knowing our Creator and knowing that we're walking in that light as He's in that light and feeling that fellowship one with another. So I, uh, you know, but hey, let's just, let's, just, let's just say this. Here's the good news. Iran is denying that the Christian pastor has died or that he will be executed. Even though he was arrested, tried, sentenced to death, and he had to go through all these appeals all the way to the highest court in the land, and even they said, you're going to die, just to have it changed after a lot of pressure. What if there hadn't been pressure by human rights groups to the United Nations? What if there hadn't been prayer? What if there hadn't been Christians demanding the release of this guy? What if I hadn't got outraged in my video three days ago when I thought, was that Monday or Tuesday, when I thought, when news broke, he had been executed. And I wasn't the only one who felt that way. There was other uh, people who did YouTube videos and, and other folks who were very just as much upset as I was. And it was all over the place. It was all over Twitter and YouTube and, and other social networks. So people were upset. Um, the good news is to report he has not been executed. He is not going to be executed. As far as we know, I don't hear about him being released from prison for a crime. If it's not, if it's not a shame to be, if it's not wrong to be a Christian there, they cut the guy loose. Now they're saying, yeah, but he has some other charges, like uh, offending Islam by turning his house into a church. Okay, anyway, the man's not going to be executed now, but that's not good enough. That was not my prayer. My prayer was, God, no, do not let this man be executed. And more, and, and besides that, God, let him be turned loose. Set him free and let him go home to his wife and children to worship the Lord and to raise his family. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. This is great news. This is wonderful news. And I'm excited about what God is doing. And this, uh, this report by the, was released by the Catholic, uh, or the UCANews.com, uh, um, it looks like 15 hours ago, but it was released today, so it must have been right, couldn't have been long, right after midnight, I guess, right, right at the beginning of the day, so that's good news, good news, praise the Lord, great news. Now let's get him out. I'm not satisfied with, oh good, they're not going to kill him. They're going to let him rot in a great, they're going to let him rot in some, you know, moldy prison somewhere. No, no, he's not going to be executed. Now let's let him go home. Three years is enough, guys. Three years is way, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's time to let him go home. And we're going to keep praying. You keep praying with me in Jesus' name. And understand something. What the Bible said, this is a biblical prophecy. It's Matthew 24, verse 9. It said this was going to happen to Christians, persecutions upon the church is not going is happening already and will continue to happen. So this is why we need to be saved and ready to meet the Lord in Jesus' name. It can't be long. He's coming for his bride in Jesus' name. If you want to be saved, send me a personal message right here on YouTube. We had three saved yesterday, and this will be a wonderful day for you to get saved. Send me a personal message, title it right here on YouTube. Personal message, title it. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. Just type it in. Title it that way. I'll respond to you. We'll share with you the Word of God. Three were saved yesterday, like I said. Four people are coming from Iowa all the way to my little church in Knox, Indiana. I'm going to be baptizing them on Sunday. You could be the next person to accept Christ as their Savior. God bless you. We'll be right back.